Welcome to BFC Live, the daily video and podcast series of Business of Cannabis. BFC Live highlights the companies, brands, people, and trends driving the global cannabis sector. Find out all that we do at businessofcannabis.com. Coming up on BFC Live, we connect with Deepak Anand and Nick Pateras of Materia, as well as Avihu Tamir of the Cannabo Group, talking about Cannabo's planned acquisition of Materia. Deepak, Avihu, and Nick, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Well, we got a we got a three person or four person uh, B of C live, so this is exciting. But also, this may be the first time we have four people in four different countries doing this. So we're we're breaking all kinds of records. Uh, this obviously, uh, obviously, uh, Nick and Deepak, we follow what's happening with Materia very closely. We know you guys. You guys have been on a lot of business of cannabis. You have your Canadian roots. Um, we've also following what's happening uh, with uh, Canabo. And, and so let's start with you, Aviho. Aviho, let's tell us a little bit about the company and then we'll get to why we're all on together. Thank you. So Canabo started as a R&D company. The idea was let's bring uh, the technology that we already know from North America that is doing quite well, that's vaporization. But how do we bring it beyond North America? Because just to understand the market and for people that are in North America, they sometimes uh, can't realize that the rest of the world, the only two options of delivery methods you have are flowers or tinctures. That's it. It doesn't matter if it's Israel, if it's Germany and uh, UK, like any medical market out there, that's what patients are using. And, um, and, and vaporization, we already know, is a huge uh, success. So that was the idea, how we take these technologies, how we take these products, passing them through a process of uh, medical validation, getting a medical device, doing um, preclinical studies, clinical studies, taking uh, formulas and cartridges that can be produced in a EU GMP facility, and, and wrapping everything together with, with proper um, um, education for physicians. Um, and that really was the core of uh, Cannibal from the beginning. And we have a research center in Israel uh, where we're doing most of the development work. And today we're um, already in the UK market, both with the uh, non-THC uh, products and the medical cannabis THC products and in Germany with the uh, CBD products. Um, so all through uh, this, this uh, vape device that have a meter dose device, a medical device certified in Israel, very soon will be CE Mark, a medical device certified in Europe. Um, and, and it's really opening this uh, um, new innovative technology and, and closing this huge gap that we see here between what physicians are feeling comfortable to prescribe and what patients are asking. And that's really the two uh, interesting things. I like it. Uh, we're going to come back to the business in one second. But, but Nick, last time we connected, you talked about um, what Materia was up to. Um, tell us, give us a little bit of an update because things have changed a bit since last we spoke. Yeah, for sure. So last we spoke, I think we had talked about the EUGMP certificate that we had just attained in Malta. So that was the culmination of about two and a half years of work, transforming what I think I described then as what was once a, a car auto repair shop into a narcotics processing facility uh, for cannabis. Um, so that was about two months ago. So since then, we've done a lot of work on preparing for commercialization. We're about to launch our products into the European market. Um, Materia Germany has continued to expand its distribution network of pharmacies up and down the country. Um, and of course, we've been working with the Cannabo team on planning some really exciting joint business ventures. So I think a lot of what you mentioned is really representative of some amazing IP work. And we're just excited to leverage that through the facility, talk about innovative products that are gonna disrupt all of Europe um, for patients. So that's, uh, yeah, that's what we've been up to. I like it. And Deepak, I want to go to you because um, 
when we've been at, like nobody's been at as long as you, at least that I know. Um, but but when we've talked to you over time, um, it's always good to sort of get the full picture where we, we first started talking about what material was up to and to now actually executing on the strategy is always exciting to see. It doesn't always happen in the cannabis world. So it's exciting to see when it does. Talk a little bit about sort of that arc. And then I, I guess what it means, uh, the, the deal you guys announced uh, that would be uh, the, the planned acquisition uh, for, uh, of Materia. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, you're right, Jay. I think that, you know, one of the things that we've done uh, ever since the get-go was have a very refined strategy. I think what we have had the opportunity to be able to do, which not a lot of the early stage cannabis companies were able to do, is have the benefit of hindsight, have the benefit of looking at where people have made mistakes, what people have said they're going to do but not do, uh, and on the opposite side, said what they're going to do and actually deliver, and, and how that's reacted generally amongst uh, various different stakeholders, whether it be shareholders, whether it be investors, whether it be capital markets, uh, and any and all of those uh, opportunities. So, uh, you know, what, what this management team, I think, has been very focused on, as, as Nick said, was, you know, being able to deliver on some of the milestones, whether it be setting up a facility in Malta, which hasn't been an easy task to be able to go from a car repair shop, as Nick mentioned, all the way up until a narcotics processing facility. But even beyond that, uh, getting EU GMP certification for cannabis, uh, you know, we're one of the first three licenses in Malta to actually be issued. And, you know, that's not a sort of, uh, you know, a small milestone. It's been, uh, you know, we, we're competing with companies that have been in this business for far longer than we've been as a management team itself. So to be able to accomplish that has been a significant, significant milestone. Uh, and the same thing I'd say on, 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 the, on the other European side, whether it be Germany or whether it be our operations in the UK, very similarly, you know, we're starting to execute on on those plans, and I think that's been sort of the the core and foundation of Materia so far. Uh, and we're certainly very excited about uh, you know the the acquisition, which is to be completed, uh, because I think that what the Cannabis team brings, and, and I'm sure I'll be able to touch base on this a little bit, is just around the listing and and particularly on the LSC, which is a, a significant opportunity as we see uh, for not just uh, you know our shareholders, but the shareholders of Cannabis as well. And and, and Avi, if I could go to you on that, because um, obviously. Uh, Canada, I would say in many ways, sort of led the way as it relates to sort of capital markets and cannabis. Um, and, and then some of those companies either cross-listed or relisted or went public um, in, in New York as well, those Canadian companies. Talk a little bit of what it means to be the first or among the first uh, cannabis companies to list in, in London uh, and what that means both for the company, but maybe even broader for the sector overall. So it was a, you know, it was a long, long uh, process. And when I got to um, the UK for the first time for, in this process, it was end of 18, end of 18. And I did this uh, first uh, roadshow with uh, my chairman and uh, we went to meet the bankers, you know, small size, mid size. Everyone was really happy to meet us because it was sexy hearing about cannabis. They know that something is happening in Canada. They're jealous uh, to see all their uh, bankers, uh, friends that are making a fortune there. Canaccord, obviously, is, is a big name. But once you're sitting with them, you understand that they are years away, at, at least at that time, to really invest in cannabis. Uh, it was like I landed from outer space there trying to list a cannabis company. Uh, I had uh, people, and I won't say names, but <laughs> asking me um, questions, basic questions. That, the, and that, these are the ones that know cannabis. They presented themselves as I mean, cannabis in the middle of me pitching, they, they saying, what is CBD and THC? And then, you know, you're stopping yourself for a minute and you understand that you really need to start from ground zero you, you really need this new, the first slide that's saying, this is hemp, this is cannabis. That, that obviously in Israel, in North America, we're, we're way uh, like past that. So that was uh, quite challenging. And, and I thought to myself, that's not gonna work. Uh, let's look until we stock exchange and think again on, on Canada. But we found a, a, a good bank that uh, said, uh, we're, we're feeling comfortable to be the first. We found a, a cash shell that was brave enough to say, well, let, let's try that. And, and still we signed the head of terms in March 19, 
and then it took us two years because only in February this year we got listed. So you always had these hurdles, even when we're finishing the prospectus and ready to go, and we had suddenly COVID. And, and even before that, we had the challenge of uh, the regulator saying, well, we're not sure that uh, where, where the cash is coming from. Is it legal in that market that you're operating? And so it took time. But obviously, like any market now, the door is open and then you're starting to see a flood. There's probably 20 companies on the route to uh, list now in the London Stock Exchange. Yeah. And so that's really the, the, the opportunity. It's quite a road and it's, um, you take the slings and arrows when you, when you break new ground for sure. Uh, Deepak, I want to go to you because obviously you have a lens, um, not only what's happened in, in Canada, North America, but also with Europe and like, where are the relative stages of the, of the sector in these different places? And maybe even beyond that, like, is there a, is there a, a path forward that you see that there's like an internationalization of the cannabis industry or are we really talking about pretty closed loops within within different sectors within different geographies yeah look i mean uh, you know one of the reasons that we set up in europe from the get-go i mean both myself and nick and various other members of our team have kind of seen canada and, and where the opportunities were and also where things might not have gone as well uh, as perhaps they should have and i think medical cannabis generally when you look at north america it's by and large been a failed experiment. I mean, we, I think we've done a good job calling cannabis medicine, but doing a really poor job treating it as medicine. Uh, you know, to this day in Canada, post federal legalization, you don't, you know, you can't access cannabis through a, an actual walk-in pharmacy, which is, uh, in in my mind and uh, our minds, a, a huge problem. Uh, same thing with the U.S. You've got a number of U.S. states that have legalized now for medical, have been for for a very long time, but but you can't get access at the storefront. I think where Europe has been different, and I think this is where Germany is super interesting in particular, is you know you, you can walk into a pharmacy and be able to access medical cannabis. And so we're very op optimistic around sort of you know where medical cannabis is going to be in, in Europe generally. You look at any of the new countries coming online, whether it be France, whether it be uh, the UK, you know it's all being dispensed as mainstream medicine and actually going to pharmacy. So that's the actual opportunity. We think that you know the market is, is going to be slow to roll out. I think that's something that people always need to caution. I think uh, I'm, 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 I'm not a huge fan of seeing these massive market numbers that, that we know are you know not actually going to materialize, but certainly th there's going to be growth, right? I think that's the important part is that as you see more and more countries in Europe come online, there is going to be growth. There is going to be sort of, you know, this access to pharmacies. And then more importantly also is reimbursement, right? We've seen Germany start to reimburse prescriptions of medical cannabis at a federal level, which again, we haven't seen uh, broad and large generally in North America. I think, you know, outside of veteran affairs in, in Canada, there's not very much coverage that you get from a federal government. So these are all steps that are in the right direction. And I think it's actually showing the world how medical cannabis is to be regulated. So we feel very bullish around the medical cannabis sector in Europe. Um, uh, and also CBD. I think the other opportunity is CBD, right? Uh, despite legalization in Canada on the legal side, you know, you can access CBD in the forms that you want it to. Whereas you go to the UK, I was with Nick a few weeks ago and I just, I couldn't help but stop myself and walk into the store and say, oh my God, like, can you believe like this pharmacy has like a whole store window just on CBD or this grocery store has got a whole window and Nick's like, let me take you inside and like, wait till you see all the different aisles. And sure enough, when I went inside, there's like coffee bottles and sodas and, and you know, candy and like there's literally CBD and everything. So I think, you know, that's a huge opportunity. And I think we have, uh, you know, a way to be able to actually, you know, we, we've looked at regulation. We have a way to be actually entering the market and, and being to, able to take advantage of the market. I think uh, even on the CBD side, there's tons of opportunities in Europe because, you know, not a lot of regulations have been set up. Not a lot of companies are complying with regulation. So just because you see something says 200 milligrams of CBD on the bottle doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're actually going to get. And so that's where we see a lot of the opportunities in, in areas for growth is, is both on the medical cannabis side as well as the CBD side in Europe. And we're, we remain very optimistic about that. Love it. Uh, Nick, I, I see you shaking your head. And actually, I want to get a little bit more even granular because like we see news coming out. Yeah, I think France I don't know, banned flower sales of, of hemp. Like what, what is the, on the very granular level, what, what countries are on the cusp, right? We've talked about Germany. You talked about the UK. I know right now you're sitting in Greece, but that's not, I, I don't know if that's one of them, but like wh where are the next dominoes going to fall or, or enter the fray? Yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a really good question. So I think France is interesting because they've, after a long period of kind of 
deliberating and humming and hoeing about medical cannabis now have an experiment in place. That's now that two year experiment is now several months uh, started, which is great. Uh, the UK, honestly, it's still a small market on the medical side, but it's growing very fast off a small base. But you're starting to see, I, I would say we're on the cusp of a critical mass of medical acceptance in the UK. Um, so you've got these countries that have kind of tiptoed into the, the pond of medical cannabis, realizing that there's actually a lake to dive into and swim in. And uh, I think they're going to get to the point where it's, it's like, OK, we, we need more than just um, a swimming board. We need a proper boat to, to swim across it and realize the potential there for patients. On the non-medical side of things, when you ask about what countries are on the cusp of basically, you know, wading into, let's call it the contemporary point of view on cannabis, giving people access, not just for medical, but for non-medical purposes too. The Netherlands is really interesting because now they have implemented or they're about to implement uh, a nationally sanctioned program of cultivation, supplying the coffee shops in 10 Dutch municipalities. So that's something that's quite interesting. People think that Holland has, you know, legal cannabis because of the coffee shops, the, the, the well-known coffee shops across Amsterdam, but that's actually not the case, it's not nationally legal. Um, well, that's changing now. Switzerland, the same thing. Pilot project being put in place will be implemented in the next few months. So all of a sudden, you actually have European countries that are going forward and going, we're actually going to have nationally sanctioned programs of non-medical access. So you have a lot of medical um, uh, movement and momentum as well. And then some countries moving forward on the non-medical side too. So those are the countries I would kind of point to in terms of medical momentum and non-medical momentum. And so while country by country, they're in different stages for sure, and they take different approaches, the direction of travel and the velocity of travel is, is really encouraging. Yeah. Um, Abihu, I wanna end with you because uh, you obviously, uh, you're the boss. <laughs> I wanna talk about um, with the planned acquisition uh, of Materia, what it means to you as a company. And then I guess as much as you can, Talk about what the next sort of six or 12 months looks like for the company and what you're most excited about. I think Materia and Cannibal is a fit, not only you know, looking at assets, obviously it's, it's, it's a good fit with assets. Cannibal was a product development and commercialization company. Materia brought processing capability and distribution in the market that is super interesting and, and Cannibal is not there and that's a German market. And, and, and an amazing, uh, know fit in the cbd we have a cbd product materia has a cbd marketplace so across the board there's a good fit but there's a good fit in culture and management as well uh, reading the market similar uh, working together properly and, and people are forgetting that most of the mnas are failing because of that and um, you need to work suddenly with people that are coming from a different culture a different experience and these are the important things so that's really one of the things that I think is uh, is a key here. And on top of it, I would say that uh, looking at forward, um, the, the large group is going to be one of the more interesting players in the market. If you're looking at the market today in Europe, you have four big players, big cannabis, we'll call them, that uh, they're taking more most of the market. But... Um, if you're looking at the opportunity, you need to disrupt the market and you need to approach it some, somehow uh, else. So the way that the material is doing it is by enabling many of these small cultivators around the world that will have no chance to get UGMP and enter the market. In Israel, you won't be able to get UGMP, even if you invest $10 million and wait four years, just because you're not getting any UGMP approvals here and certifications. Similar challenges you have in Africa and South America. So by enabling hundreds of these players to get into the market and picking and choosing really the good ones, you suddenly bringing into the market new products, interesting products, higher quality maybe, competitive pricing and to a market where competition is, is quite low because everyone is selling the same. And, and, and that's really the, the you know, it's a innovation in supply chain, I will say, in a route to market. Um, and, and similar to what Nick said, the market is not going to stay as it is. You're feeling the change. We're getting into this tipping point. I would mention Israel as well. It's not in Europe, but Israel is going recreational. And the, the government have changed. Um, 
majority of population is supporting now uh, full legalization. Um, and once you will have a proper, like a significant country in Europe that will be recreational, it will look very similar to what happened in the US. Uh, it's like, it's, it's gonna start uh, flowing everywhere. There's no borders, exactly the same challenge that happened in the US. Yeah. Well, uh, Deepak, Abihu, and Nick, it's been great to connect with uh, all of you. Nice to meet you, Abihu. Congratulations on the deal or the plan deal. Uh, it's been great to connect to get insight on the company, on the deal, on uh, what's happening in Europe, but also to see your smiling faces. It's been nice to connect. And we'll see everybody, we'll see everybody down the road. Likewise. Thanks, Jay. Yeah. Thanks, Jay. Deepak Anand, Avi Hutamir, and Nick Pateras talking about all things European cannabis. If you like this program, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you heard the show. It helps support the work we do. We're able to do what we do because of our ongoing partners, including Alterna Savings, Cannabis at Work, Cannabis Benchmarks, Can Delta, Gallagher, Headset, and Torque Mains. Find out all that we do at businessofcannabis.com. <laughs>